I have one question for you. Why? Why are you still using a 4x12? By the end of this video, you'll be kicking that 4x12 to the curb and picking up a 2x12 in no time. What's up everyone, Man Bun Metalhead here. Let's talk about these monstrous 4x12 cabinets that everyone seems to need. But I guarantee you, 90% of people that use a 4x12 don't actually need one. Before I get started, if you're one of those guys that thinks he needs a full stack, just stop this video. It's not for you. We get it. You have a huge reason number one. You're miking the cab anyway. I know this generally applies to when you're gigging at a venue. I get to practice in a bit. But really when you're playing live, you can get away with a 1x12 a microphone and routing that signal into the monitors, no problem. A lot of guitarists like myself do prefer to put their amp at the side of the stage so they can side wash and better hear themselves. But a 412 is just overkill, which leads me to reason number two. A 4x12 cabinet is not any louder than a 2x12 cabinet. Now, this might not seem totally obvious, but when you think about it, it'll make sense. The power delivered to an amp is equally dispersed to all the speakers that are connected to it. So if you have a 100 watt amp and you have four speakers, each speaker is going to have 25 watts. If you have two speakers, each speaker is gonna output 50 watts. So when you add them all together, it's like having 100 watts of power. Don't believe me? Grab a decibel meter and measure. Oh wait. In reality, the closer you get to the maximum output of a speaker, the less efficient it's going to be. So by keeping the power output low, when you have more speakers, um, you're going to lose less of that power efficiency. So a 412 might be a touch louder than a 212 when you're playing at maximum volumes. But in my testing, uh, I was only one to maybe two decibels louder with a 412 than a 212 and really, that was at 100 decibels, which is fucking loud. So really, I doubt you'd notice a difference in the two amps, but if you did, you could feather that output ever so slightly to make them equal. Reason number three, a four x 12 is a pain in the ass to transport. When you compare the two x 12 to the four x 12, the four x 12 is roughly twice as big. Secondly, the four x 12 weighs 50 to 70% more than its 2x12 counterpart. I compared the weights of comparable Marshall and Mesa cabinets. The Marshall 1936, which is a 2x12, weighs about 54 pounds, and the 1960A, which is a 4x12, weighs 80 pounds, which is 48% more. The Marshall 2x12 rectifier cabinet weighs about 61 pounds, and the 4x12 weighs 104 pounds, which is about 70% more. So the size and weight of the 2x12 really makes it ideal for one person to carry it, especially when you're carrying it upstairs, which is the bane of the 4x12. A little parched. Reason number four, a 4x12 costs more than a 2x12. The aforementioned Marshalls are $800 and $1,100 new, and the Mesas are $800 and $1,200 new. The used market might be a little different, uh, the 4x12s tend to be a little more readily available. So depending on where you look, you might be able to find a used 4x12 for the price of a used 2x12. But what you have to look out for is the quality of the 4x12s. So 4x12s typically are a road amp. So they're gonna see a lot of wear and tear. Um, so if you get a 4x12 that's a really cheap price, it might not be in that good a condition. 2x12s aren't typically used on the roads, so they're probably gonna be in better condition. Now, I know what you're thinking, but dude, a 4x12 gives me better sound dispersion so everyone in the band can hear me. This leads me into reason number five. The sound dispersion is too damn big. First of all, sound dispersion is basically the amount of area that a speaker will cover both horizontally and vertically. So by having more speakers, you're going to cover more area. Now you might think this is a good thing, but I beg to differ. For example, who wants to hear the guitarist the most? You guessed it, the guitarist. Whether you're on stage or at practice and the guitarist can't hear themselves, they're gonna crank up their volume. If they're using a two by 12, the sound 
is directed, or should be directed right at them because the sound dispersion on the 2x12 is very narrow. So when he turns up the volume, the rest of the band won't get so annoyed. If they're using a 4x12, that sound dispersion is so wide, all that sound that isn't hitting the guitarist's ears, mostly those two speakers in the bottom, are going to instead reach everyone else in the band, more than likely pacing them off. And we all know how fragile our bandmates' egos are. Of course, you will need some way to direct that 2x12 at you. My preferred method is this angled stand. I purchased this on stage stand a few years ago. It has two legs to hold the cabinet and a carriage for the amp to sit on top. I'm not a big fan of the carriage, so I just put the amp directly on top of the cabinet and there's still support in the back to keep the amp from falling off. I scoured the internet and for the life of me could not find this stand sold anywhere. I think On Stage Stands sells a couple decent alternatives. Do you think this video is sponsored by On Stage Stands? I think the best option is one of the two tripod stands. They should be able to easily hold a cabinet and an amp and they have a back support for the amp to keep from falling off. And one of the tripods even comes with a mic boom arm so you can mic up the cab as well. I am seriously considering buying that. Uh, one of the things I've been trying to do with this stand for the longest time is figure out how to integrate a mic into it, and that might be the key. Of course, I gotta start gigging again before I pull the trigger on that. Anyway, that's about all I got for my battle between the 412 and the 212. Of course, if you have a 412 already, it's not really cost effective to get rid of it and buy a 212, but if you are sick of carrying that thing around, if you're looking to buy a new cabinet, go for the 212, you'll be so happy that you did. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hopefully it helped you out. If it did, hit that thumbs up button. And if it didn't, hit that thumbs up button anyway. It really helps me out a lot. And if you wanna hear more about what I'm working on, like gear tips and tricks, reviews, techniques, that kind of stuff, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you're notified whenever I have a new video come out. But hey, until next time, rock on.